Okay, so here we are on, I think it's our fifth podcast um, with my incredible co I mean, incredible, meticulous, well-detailed, uh, smart, cool co-host, Jocelyn Sokol. She's down below. Jocelyn, will you raise your hand? Yeah. I'm just being a wise guy. Dave, you're supposed to. <laughs> no, I was, you didn't, you didn't Hi, Dave. Uh, Jocelyn, and are really, uh, and again, you know, blah, 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 blah. But Dave is a real thing. Like um, anyone who's had a chance to work with him, alongside of him, or even watch him in action. I mean, this guy is not only a wonderful human being, but he's smart, he's funny, he's loose, but tight. He's really, really leads with his heart and has touched thousands of kids during his career as a teacher. Then when I really got to know Dave as a guidance counselor at BF for over 20 years, as an amazing coach, and also in his new position as a guidance counselor, this is a really new position created by the Ridgewood Public Schools that Dave is in. Um, Dave and I sh have shared, we've always had this bond. I mean, we, we love each other. We're allowed to say that. Um, we've worked together. We've had this one bond that both of our dads died very young. My dad died at age nine. Dave's dad was, or you were, when I was nine, how old were you? How old were you again? I, I was uh, seven, a month before, to seven, almost eight. Yes, yeah, seven, eight. Dave's dad was an icon up at Ridge as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And we've always had that connection. But he's yes. a, he really is the best of the best. Love him. And he's here today to be part of our podcast. So I'm going to let, let Jocelyn take over with our first message or question for you, Dave. Okay. Well, Dave, well, um, will you tell us, hi. Um, you, you know, a little bit about what you do, um, you know, before COVID-19 and, um, and then, you know, the challenges that um, are being presented. Sure. So first, thanks for having me on. It's great. I think what you're doing here is a, uh, just a great, um, a great idea and uh, a lot of good can come out of this. So thanks for having me. Um, you know, prior to this whole situation, uh, it was neat for me because, um, you know, I have 24 years of experience in education and I came in this year in a brand new position and I tell people all the time, I felt like a first year teacher um, with 24 years of experience. So it was this, you know, it, it was very interesting to come in with a job with no description. Um, I mean, minimal description. And it was really uh, me and, and there's two other guidance counselors between six schools. We're kind of pioneers creating this, this new role. So I felt it was important that the first couple of years go really well so that the expectation of what this job is um, might be long lasting. Um, so one of the, basically what we were doing before, we're, we were um, a really, I always tell the kids this, one word comes to mind is we're there to help. That's as simple as that. How can we help? Um, most of the work was working with um, individual students or families working just social emotional stuff, trying to work through it. Um, really trying to help kids regulate emotions, um, supporting staff. Um, anyway, sometimes, you know, I, I would help kids indirectly. I will, would always say where I'd work with teachers to develop lessons or um, ways to reach certain kids because, you know, ultimately in schools, I, Teachers are so valuable and they are the most important connection with kids, right? So a guy who comes into their school for the first time ever and he sits in an office, which I mean, I don't sit in the office, but I'm the new guy. And I always tell the teachers, they form the connection with you. And then if you need more assistance, if they trust you, my job's easy. You hand them over to me, they trust me because you trust, they trust you. So doing a lot of that, supporting teachers, administrators, parents, really a big support role uh, between two schools. Yeah. So, so Dave, I didn't mention up front, but I should have, that you and Aaron, your, your amazing wife, have begun this Mindful Educators podcast 
yeah. which is incredible. It and is. Jocelyn it, and I been, both listening. watched it's really it. Great. it yeah. yeah, and what it shows is that you've got that amazing way about you to make other people, whether they're people you're interviewing or students or people around you feel good and feel comfortable in your presence. And yep. I, we just, I mean, I find this tremendously, just like I, I find losing a parent at age nine, it's different than going through grieving at age 30. The coronavirus, COVID-19 for adults, what's it really like? You're on the phone, you're on Zooming all day with yeah. eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds. You are the, the, the base of knowledge that you've gathered here. What, 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 what's going on? How are they taking it? Um, what I'll say is it's, I mean, it's such a unique experience for everybody, right? So like every day I'm like learning something, um, but it does boil back down to me. Uh, you know, I appreciate what you were saying. I, I do kind of feel that's an area that I think you have it too, Jim. It's this gift of just, I mean, it's simple, right? You just let people feel seen, heard, listened to, validate it. And that's all people want, right? That's what we want as a core to feel valued. So, you know, working with younger kids, before I connect with the kids, if it's like in a Zoom or a, we use the Google Meet sometimes, I really have to develop that relationship with the parent first. Um, and I can't tell you the, and these are kids who I don't even want to say that there's, they're reaching out for me. I mean, some are, but reaching out with so much need or I need your help so much. Some of these, I call them just check-ins. And the parents are so appreciative that it's, I don't know, you feel a real close, like there's a couple families that I have grown close with through the computer. <laughs> it's weird. And, and, you know, they put their son on and then we're talking and we're laughing and, you know, I can change my backgrounds on my Zoom screen and put up like cartoon characters and we're all laughing together. And I just think it's, it's actually, this is not ideal, but you make the best of what you can. And I, I'm actually finding that with certain families, I'm actually growing a closer connection. It's almost a little bit more, um, I don't want to say it's more meaningful or intimate, but it, it's, you really like, yeah. we're connecting, we're sharing our pets and we're, yeah. we're the, those boundaries are breaking down, but it, it's great. It's, it's really rewarding. Yeah. So great. Justin. Well, you know, we've been finding with our clients um, in our coaching that, any issues that they were working on um, or many are being magnified during COVID-19. So are you seeing that with some of the kids who were having emotional you know, issues or? So I'm not sure, uh, I'll answer this the best that I can from my experience with some kids. See, you probably have the benefit of your direct with your clients where I don't know if the parents I'm working through or with are giving me, you know, you never know if you're getting the full story. Yeah. Um, what I'm actually seeing is a lot of our kids who are feeling uh, or experience any maybe social struggles or um, trying to regulate their emotions within a large class setting, when we're interacting, they're actually, they seem to me almost the opposite. <laughs> they're, they look relaxed. They're, they're giggling. They're, they're engaging with me verbally where, you know, you really have to ask the right questions when you're in the school setting to get a response. We're here. They're like offering, let me show you this. Let me show you that. Like really opening up. Um, so that's what I'm seeing. And then actually what I'm seeing, the other piece is children who I actually have never had to interact with. Some parents reaching out saying, you know, can, is this normal behavior or are we seeing this or explaining some of the struggles they might be having or they're not tending to their work or they seem anxious or they're missing their friends. So kids who've never missed their friends are now having to learn like, wow, I miss my friends. So I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing both spectrums of this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really cool, Dave. Like you, you have an identity, you know, as a coach, you try to come forth as a certain person. Like as a guidance counselor, a certain person for 20 years. Now all of a sudden you have to reinvent yourself 
as another person. And, you know, every viewer here today looks at you and goes, the guy is kind of a combination of Tom Cruise, uh, Kevin Costner, Marlon Brando. But really, <laughs> to me, you know who you are? I mean, it's Tell not me. even a question. Like, like everyone's like, duh. It's not even a question who you are in that sure. school. Fred Rogers. Uh, you are Mr. Rogers. You are the guy that every kid wants to crawl up with and just kind of give a hug to. You're the guy that lets people show their feelings. You're yeah. the guy who says, it's okay to be you. Yeah. And, and you know what? As bizarre as it sounds, I love you. I'm here for you anytime. So you're really, this identity is so beautiful. Yeah. And, and yet it's built on a solid framework of a core of, of, of someone who understands what it's like to, and you've, you've been there, you've, you've gone through pain, heartache, and, and, you, and you, allow, you allow people to be authentic, even little kids, so. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's great, thank, I mean, thanks, that's a great, that's a compliment, and I, you know, I appreciate that. Um, moving to the elementary school, you know, I, I thought that I, was connected with my emotions and um, was really working with kids, trying to allow them to express emotion and regulate emotion and really just identify and label emotion. But this move with these little kids is really, I don't want to use the word softened me because I don't think I was ever, you know, tough guy, but um, you see kids in pure innocence and like genuine, sometimes struggling with their emotions and, uh, it all goes back to just, I, I believe that no matter, you know, I've taught at a high school, middle school, and now elementary. If you connect with kids, that's all they want. I, I, was, I was reading, I don't know if you've had a, the opportunity to read Permission to Feel by Mark Brackett. Yeah. It, it's, it's, yeah. he's, he's everything that I've been wanting. You know, everybody's all about research. Everything has to be research-based, research-based. Well, he's the head of like emotional intelligence up at Yale, and he... Um, they basically one of the things he talks about is um, the need to that emotions are first, right? That we kids can't attend to attention and learning or anything until we we get a handle on how to process their emotions. And one of the biggest takeaways I had from him is kind of like what you were saying there, Jim, is that people need to know that they have someone that they can go to. Even if they never ask you, the fact that they know, if I needed to, I could call Jim Stroker and I know he would come here and he, I may never do it, but that's where that connection and relationship builds. And if kids can have one person and if I'm that person, great, but I don't need to be that person. If I can find somebody for the kid to be that person, that's just as good for me that every kid has one person that they feel no matter what I can go to them, yeah. whether they do or not, that that's the security kids need. Incredible. Yeah. So, so you know, in obviously social media and technology has had, you know, some negative effects in the last mm -hmm. few years on kids. Um, right. Right now, are you seeing um, a heightened use of social media or technology and, you know, what kind of effect is that having? Um, wait, I missed one part in the beginning. Is, so, is the social media having what? So social media, you know, in the last few years has had some negative effects. And yeah. right now, there's probably a heightened use of uh, yeah. social media and technology. So how do you think that's affecting kids during COVID-19? Sure. Got it. So again, um, the population that I'm working with, um, which is K through five, right. it's, um, it's actually, I see it as a positive. The, there's a lot of parents who rightfully so have held those um, devices or apps if they have the phone, like they're not allowing, prior to this, not on Instagram or not on certain things they now realize that they kind of have to allow these things to happen. So they're, they're actually navigating them with the child. So like, I feel like kids 
you know, maybe a positive will be that they will learn to use social media in a more positive way. I think like in my own home, like we're modeling, like my, my own kids and they're older, but they saw me last night on Zoom with my college roommates watching me laugh and re pulling out old pictures and seeing me use this technology is like, wow, I probably never saw my dad laugh this hard at a, at a computer screen before. And maybe we're modeling for them like this, there's, some, there's positive ways that we can use all this stuff. Um, so that's what I'm hoping comes out of it, you know, mm -hmm. and bring it into the classrooms too. I think our teachers are gonna begin modeling how we interact and, and, and you know, it's, it, I think that's a positive. Um, what I can tell you is I've spent a lot of time in my career um, uh, navigating or getting messages from parents or students about negative things that have been posted and children kind of, you know, making a, a lot of negative comments towards each other or exclusion, nothing. <laughs> and I'm talking at, you know, I speak to people at the middle school level too. We're really not seeing, you know, nobody's showing you posts of negative things anymore. We're seeing actually a lot of positive things. You're seeing everyone supporting Valley workers and the, the fire department and the police department. So it really seems to be being used in a positive way right now. That's great. Yeah. D Dave, I, I know you've been in, in incredible schools. Uh, I was at BF with you. It was incredible. Um, you're down at Hawes, which is beyond, beyond. Yeah. Somerville. I mean, you have incredible people. Mm -hmm. Without any question, one day you'll be a principal in the Ridgewood school system. No matter how long that takes, it will happen. You know, when it happens, who knows, but you will. And you've seen the best. And one day you'll have an opportunity to craft a school with all the things that you've learned and all the things that you've seen may be missing. And the one thing I know about you, you're one of the more creative guys that I've ever met. And you're not afraid, you're brave. Thanks. And I know like we've talked about Hawes, your principal meeting each child every day, getting off the bus. Hmm. You've seen people at BF stand out. If you in a nutshell, I don't wanna push you into a corner. If you could see like the perfect post-school coronavirus that you would try to create, hmm. what would be some of the elements of that without getting and again, I'm not saying this is not what it is. I'm just no, saying, what would you create? Yeah, so you're saying like, so when we come back, yeah, I think. Or if you're the principal of a school, it's the right. new school, you take mm -hmm. over. What are some of the things that you would enact of some of the things with your mindfulness training mm -hmm. that you would say, I'd make sure in my school, we would all do blank. Yeah, I, I think the one of the biggest things that I've always felt, but I think is coming out more and more, I think to me is this, and I keep saying the word, it's this idea of connection, is I would really, you know, I'm all, as you know, the principal's only one person in the building, but to model with the staff how important it is to connect, how to connect, how to become emotionally aware of what other people might be feeling, um, you know, the simple question of asking people, how, you know, how are you feeling, creating time to know you know, a lot of times if I asked you right now, real quick, hey, Jim, how are you feeling? Eh, I'm fine. I'm great. Nobody's going to unload on you, right? Like, actually, I'm doing terrible. Everybody just gives you that answer. Doing fine. It's like an obligatory question. I, I would love to get to that point where a school in their open circles and in the, at the lower level or in their advisories, and this would take time, is where we're really starting to dig it. How are you really feeling? And that's a lot of work because you got to create that culture of safety I mean, let's be honest, where you're going to really be vulnerable and do that, you know, so there's ways of, you know, starting that in smaller groups and bigger groups. But if we could have a, a school where teachers and administrators were checking in with each other, like, and, and you know, recognizing people have bad days or people have worries and just, um, just allowing that to be and allowing people to share that and develop that level of like empathy, right, to know that everybody else is struggling and we might not always realize that. Uh, I think that this situation has allowed us to realize like, it'd be hard to say that there aren't a lot of people who might be scared or have some worry or some anxiety or, 
you know, and, and people are taking the best, making the best of it as well. But somewhere in there, that emotion has to pop up every now and then. And just, uh, I think a, a school community that really, that was like the backbone of really taking care of people's emotions would be just life changing. Yeah, it's beautiful. So what is the learning that you think um, can be happening through this experience to bring into um, the school system after this is over? Um, well, I think some of the things that, that I'm seeing, I know that there are teachers who are, they're meeting like we are right now. And instead of like the whole class, they're meeting in these small groups, developing like these little learning communities within the bigger learning community. And then I think eventually they'll start to mesh them together. You know, Jim was in a classroom and he knows when you're in a classroom with 26 kids, it's a whole lot different than when you're in a room with six. And if you can actually hand pick the six and divide, you can really make some truly dynamic, meaningful relationships and connections. And I don't know, I think if every kid feels that sense of like, I belong, and you have, you know, instead of a class of 24, you have four classes of six, and all six of all four of those clusters feel like they belong. I mean, what you just created a, a, a school culture that's like, off the charts. Nobody feels like that. Everybody always feels a little bit out. You know, we don't always feel a part of something. I just have one more. I know we, I could go on forever. Yeah. I know we're timed out here. But this virtual world, mm. the three of us in this room together, we're, we're actually feeling each other's energy. And, mm. and my, my friend Bruce Tamlin, a pastor up at Silver Bay, called it a new kind of intimacy. Because it really is. I mean, you're yeah. seeing people, you're interacting with people. How will we bring what we've learned through the school as part of our whatever? I just think there's so much. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a great question. I, I don't know the, the answer. I mean, I've thought about that because in, in you know, this is, I mean, full transparency. As you listen to my podcast, I do, right? I, I struggle with the staying in the present. I don't have so much of the going back in the past, but every now and then I'll catch my monkey brain going and saying, well, what if down the road? And I am thinking about what is this reentry going to look like? Like, what if it happens on March 15th? I mean, they, he said May 15th, you know, after that. What if June 1st we go back? What if it's September? What if, as you know, you've mentioned, what if it's November, December? Whenever it is, you know, are kids just going to forget about it? Like, is this going to, uh, like, just go right back to the way it was? I think it's almost like, it's like a chance to kind of reinvent ourselves, right? If, you know, people say you get a new job or it's a new school year, like this is really an opportunity to start the, whenever we come back with like, yeah. this is the new normal. And if bringing this, as you said, this intimate or this more emotionally connected society and caring, and listen, we, we work in a, in a district or Jim, the district we worked in was, it is caring. I mean, I've worked in other, it, this is a caring place. There's no doubt about that, but I'm just saying there's always opportunities to make things stronger and, and bring us even closer. And if we, we talk about it, right, not just bury it like, let's just move on. All right, let's take out our math. Let's really talk about it and be vulnerable, like things that we were feeling. And I know it's risky to do, but I, I think it can be done. And I think if people really are able to share and have that feeling in an environment where they can share their feelings, I mean, then, then we've really gained from this experience. Yeah. Josh, you want to finish up? Yeah, no, I mean, thank you so much for speaking with us today and um, for dedicating, you know, your life to helping kids. It's really an amazing thing. Oh, thank you. Like, one of the things we're trying to do is create interesting podcasts. Mm -hmm. I'm so interested in what you say. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like this on every word. So... Even if no one else thinks this is interesting. That's all right. I that's it's a win for me. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, like, how can you get this wrong? Uh, Dave, funny. again, just in, in closing, you know, thank you. Um, and thank you from everyone that might watch this, uh, from every family um, who you've done more than what's expected always. You know, there's some people that look at their job description and they follow it. And they're there when they should be and they leave 
when they should. And then there's other people who decide that they want to just be more than what's expected. And you don't only, you don't only do it willingly, but you do it eagerly. And we thank you for that and love you with all of our heart. Yes. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you both for having me and, and thank you for everything you're doing. And Jim, you know, thank you for your friendship. It's, it's, uh, you're one of the first people I met. We could, that, if you want a funny podcast people to listen to, we could tell some stories when I first started. Yeah, come on. Kiss. 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 Um, on. <laughs> but you, you took me under your wing and, um, uh, it's, you've really, you've, you've helped me adapt to this community and, um, uh, your friendship means a lot to me. Thanks. All right, guys. Thanks, right. Emily. Now, bye. Thank you.